Everybody, and welcome to Train World TV. We have a special episode tonight, and it is the Broadway Limited Special Edition show with Ken Silvestri, none other. And uh, we picked a great night, not knowingly that it was St. Patty's Day, and that's how quick life goes by in the train industry. <laughs> 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 but uh, we, we also have some two very special uh, guests tonight. Uh, James Wright, JLWII2000. How you doing, James? Good, Ken. My 23 and me says I'm 1,006 1, Irish, so I want a great shirt today. <laughs> very nice, very nice. And Tony, how you doing, Tony? Long time no see. I missed you, buddy. You know, oh, buddy, he said. When I popped into the screen a few minutes ago, I think it was, oh, that's just Tony. You know, when I walk into my Lincoln dealer or White Castle, they don't treat me like that. <laughs> oh, yeah, I come in here and it's, oh, it's just Tony. That was my fault. <laughs> yeah, yeah we, we almost had another uh, Ken Silvestri crisis. Uh, he, he's getting used to canceling on me now. <laughs> <laughs> that close. And Ken, and he, how he, He's the guy bringing the good stuff tonight. He's got to be here. <laughs> That's right. That's right. It, it, it would have been uh, uh, just me, you, and James tonight, and I'm not sure how many people would have stayed in to watch us three. <laughs> or to watch you dance? I would have, I would have, I would have watched that. <laughs> <laughs> and, Ken, how you doing? Well, I'm doing great. Um, uh, it, it's, uh, it, it's hard to believe what we're talking about. It's almost spring, but... Uh, uh, here we are. Um, the train business has been wonderful. We, we've been delivering a lot of product. Uh, things have been good. That's awesome. And again, Ken Silvestri from Broadway Limited Trains tonight. And uh, basically, tonight we're going to go over a lot of topics. Uh, Ken has a lot of samples. We're going to go over E6, Blue Goose, SD45, RSD15s for N scale. Uh, P5A for N scale, uh, um, uh, 484s, big boy N scales, uh, a special announcement, not yet announced, so I'm going to save that for later, but a lot of great stuff, and I'll, I'll leave it up to Ken, but put in the chat where you're from, uh, we see a lot of people out of state, so hello everyone, thank you guys for joining, Vermont, LA, uh, former New Yorker, nice California. So people from all over uh, joining us, and happy St. Patty's Day for every everyone. I do uh, appreciate that. So we'll kick it off with Ken. And Ken, where do you want to start? First, with with an Irish saying: "May the good Lord Lord take a liking to you, but not too soon." Okay, old, old Irish. <laughs> All right, we're going to start off uh, with what has just shipped. And 
that would be an N scale starting off with the P five A's. Very neat. And uh, these are extraordinary. I hope you can get a good look at them. Um, but uh, they they're die cast. They're in stores now. This is the the Pensy. And then we have a couple of, of fantasy schemes, and they're sharp as can be. Yeah, these just came in, and I I don't think anyone's ever done this before in N scale. No, I don't I don't believe so. That's awesome. And here's the New Haven one. Again, this is a fantasy scheme, but it's sharp. And, and let me say this about the fantasy schemes. We're not going to make a New Haven electric, uh, a specific New Haven electric locomotive. So this perhaps is the next best. Very good. And they, they want you to uh, pull it out of your pocket again. <laughs> Don't you love M scale? <laughs> the other the other item that's just shipped is the the Paragon Four uh, Northern Pacific and SP and S four eight four hybrid in HO, and the hybrids I just think are so spectacular. Wow! Um, wow! Beautiful! And. Yeah. You know, I've talked about some uh, some models approach art, and I think the hybrids just do that. Absolutely, yeah. That's that is a beauty. Uh, just spectacular, and that's that's a train world as we speak. Yeah, that that literally just came in. I I believe yesterday or two days ago. Very quick um th those are really nice and uh tony james what do you think about that those two uh new announcements that just came in well the uh spns number 700 is still actually in use out in the pacific northwest uh, it runs frequently with the same folks that uh do 4449 southern pacific 4449 so i know a lot of excursion modelers will be happy with that uh, brass hybrid uh, 484 locomotive and then the other ones you know the modelers from the 1920s steam era will love those models they're just uh they're really nice to have a brass model essentially a brass model there's very few parts on that that's not brass but not having to pay several thousand dollars for it like you have to in the brass market so i'm always excited about the brass hybrid stuff yeah oh exactly yeah they're beautiful. Like we just did the Milwaukee 261 in Model Railroad News. And I mean, those are fantastic looking. That little P5 electric, though, you guys have done it in HO. It's now an N. Anybody not familiar with that, do a little research on it because everybody loves the GG1s and all those. But this this is really a unique and as Ken not done. I mean, GG1s, uh -huh. I can line them up and fill a table with all the people that have done them. But this P5, if you're a collector or looking for something different and you got electrics, look at this thing. because it And it is amazing. I've not seen the N yet, but the HO, I've seen, I've seen those from a couple of runs. And wow, it is, it's such an odd, you know, it's such an old time piece. I mean, it's really a neat, nice model. Yeah. The, favorite, uh, or go, go ahead. ahead. It's my favorite rolling rectangle. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah it, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't done in H.O. Orion and, uh, yeah. you know, 1930s locomotive. And I think a really cool thing for people in the Pennsylvania era, area is uh, it was manufactured in Erie, Pennsylvania at a plant that's still creating, uh, you know, locomotives and rolling stock. And that it's like a it's still a railway plant in use. So pretty neat uh, um, tie to the Erie, Pennsylvania area area. And, and Tony, am I mistaken, but uh, I'm pretty sure you had a, a cover shoot of the the P5, or it, or was that a, um, an HO scale maybe you did? Uh, I, HO, I, we, we might have. I know we've covered okay. the HO. Yeah, we haven't reviewed the N scale yet. Because okay. this is the first run, yeah. isn't it, Ken? It, this is the yes. first time for N scale. For, yeah. for N scale. So I'm probably thinking about the article you did with the, the HO. HO. And, right, and when right. you mentioned that, uh, Ken said it was a box on 
wheels. I, <laughs> I need to look because I think my reviewer said something to that effect of like, it's the neatest box on wheels you'll ever see. And I remember thinking like, what? And I go, yeah, it is. But no, it's cool. <laughs> when we first announced the HO one, I'm like, okay, it sounds looks great. Then when I saw the model, it's like, wow, that's just uh, extraordinary. That, that's great. And the end scalers have to be happy with you guys. I mean, you, you guys really are taking care of the end scalers and it, it's a great time for a, a HON end scale modeler, but now end scalers are starting to get, you know, some new molds, you know, consistently. So I, I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. We're excited about that. We really are. Really are. And for the first time ever, they'll be producing a, in scale steam locomotive that actually has puffing smoke. I haven't seen that yeah. in the other. Yeah. yeah. Not puffing smoke. Oh, it no, won't not, be puffing. Oh, no. not puffing, but regular smoke. I'm sorry. It'll, it'll have smoke. Yeah. And uh, just, just this is funny. When, when Bob and I first got into the HO and uh, we said, you know, we were told nobody in HO wants sound, <laughs> nobody in HO wants smoke, nobody wants trash and tires. And it's like, I think they really do. We just have to do it well, you know. Yeah. If it's done right, uh, people will like it, and and it, it just helps to sell the illusion. Yeah, you I, know, and that's the I talked uh, Bob and I talked about this in the last month or so. Now I can't remember what it was on, but about the fantasy paints, and I said I absolutely love them. He said, you know, and at first we got told, oh, you can't do that, no. And he said we started doing them, and they sell like crazy. And yeah. I hear that from other manufacturers too. In fact, I just, I'm always buying stuff from Ken, but I just bought some stuff from Ken the last week that was Fantasy Roads. And I just pre ordered that UP Centipede, which is one of those fantasies that's an almost. Yeah. They order, yeah. So those are fantastic. And I, I can't get enough of them when you guys do them. So well, that's thank awesome. you. Thank you. All right. We're well, moving to the, to the sneak peek time. So, I'm going to start off and you guys know about this. This is a, uh, a 3D produced model. Oh, and wow. I broke the trailing truck off. It was really, <laughs> it, it was, it was really uh, uh, just too thin, but it's not obviously not a part, but wow. This is the, and, and it's caused wow. quite a stir. The orders have been fabulous on it. That's unbelievable. Uh, and, it got, and it will have smoke on it. Wow. And let's see. Oh, I wrote the date down, but I didn't put it on this sheet. So uh, does anyone have a computer open with the, with the delivery dates? Yeah. I'll, I'll, the, the, and that's what the in-scale big boy? We didn't yeah. say what it was either. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. This is yeah, November of 2022 on your uh, website, Ken. Oh, I think it's like December. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And the next model is also a 3D. And it's a Norfolk and Western, Western. Y6B. Wow. And that's N scale or? That's N scale. Wow. This hasn't been announced, so it's not orderable um but there'll be a lot of information on it soon wow. wow so that's really never been told that tony did you know this before me i did not know about <laughs> this no I, right. I, I i knew he had an sd4 or he's going to show us an sd45 in ho but i had not seen or heard of the n and wy wow that's nice very cool and i again so a big boy uh new announcement with with smoke never been done before with smoke i don't think there's uh maybe uh, very few if any on the american market with smoke but not like a major production model and then you have the y6b that i don't think that's ever been done in n scale correct i don't think so i don't think so i'm trying to think 
I, I don't mean, know. If, uh, it seems like somebody did one out of Europe about 1970, but I'm not sure if it was that <laughs> one. I think so. I'd have to think. It might have been, but well, uh, nothing, it, nothing contemporary. It's not been done beyond the days of the big rapido couplers and that kind of thing. If yeah. it was made in 1970, I think you had to push it by hand. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, I think we, we got some uh, real winners, Ken. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And uh, yeah, there'll be announcements and delivery dates and, and all for that. But so That's next. Good. And I'll share your uh, your delivery. Um, oh, cool. Here we got, uh, I guess, expected in March. You got uh, the 4A4s, um, F3s, F7s, three bay hoppers and end scale, covered hoppers and end scale. Um, Pacifics and end scale as the 70s in April and end scale. Then you go to March. But this is really neat uh, and easy for customers just to see when things are uh, pushing out. Now, Ken, yeah. don't you have, you've got exclusives on those F units. I think I have them ordered. Those, don't you have the black yes. Santa Fe's? Yeah. Yes, the black bonnets. Yeah, and I've that, got a pair of those ordered. Cool. A throwback for the uh, vintage Lionel people. <laughs> You know, while we're still talking about an end scale steam, we were also told when we were getting into end scale that end scales don't want steam, they like diesels. And we thought, you know, they just haven't had a lot of good steam. And we felt we could convert them for sure. And uh, here we are. And That's amazing. The, the orders for the big boy have been fabulous, just fabulous. Sometimes you convert uh, HO guys in the end scale. I've heard a couple of <laughs> stories, and uh, and I'm putting an end scale spur kind of a selective compression off in the distance of my layout just because of some of the cool stuff coming out. Awesome. So, awesome. so cool. yeah, it's a end scale just in the 11 or what's it been, 13 years I've been in the hobby now has changed so much, and you guys have been at the forefront of that. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. The fact that we can get our electronics in an end scale switcher to me is still it's still magic involved into it. I don't know how it how it can be done. A speaker and a board in an end scale switcher, um, but that that's just been our guys are our, our guys are real good. Next we have the SD forty five. And here it is. And you can see this is a, a pre-production piece. Um, it's cool. You can see some of the the brass made parts that are in, that are, are uh, added to it. Uh, and you know, a lot of the parts aren't on these yet. And can you see on the top? It says SP. And these models, these... Um, SD45s are very road specific. And you can see the, the different models on the website, there's pictures. But this is the um, the SP, and as you can see it's a low hood. It got you guys are doing the light package on the nose, and it's got the L-shaped cab window up front for the SP, is some of its spotting features. And here's the southern. You can see it's a high hood. All right. Lift rings. Again, these are pre-production, so there's not a lot of the steps and things on it. It's it's just one of the first steps when we get a, a new model to see how it looks, what's the tooling like, yada, yada. And these are, well, I wrote down all the, the dates and I didn't put them on this. I think these are September. You've got like a whole run beginning in the fall with the SD45, I believe is September, October delivery for its first okay. run. It's a follow up to the Jeep 20 and the Paragon 4 all new diesels. And then you follow with, I think, a 30 Jeep 35 then Jeep 30 by years in. You guys are cranking out so much product. I can't keep up with it. I need someone to start doing, I need somebody else to start doing a magazine that I can cheat off of and keep up with everything coming out. It's too much for me. <laughs> we, we do a lot of, a lot of new tools. Yeah. Uh, we really do it. That's kind of our, our business model. So, 
And people wanted a lot of different road names in uh, the SD45. So, um, does anyone have the, the web page open to the, the different road names? I, I sure do, Ken. Yeah, you've got Santa Fe in the Freight War Bonnet or Yellow Bonnet, which would be after 1972. And those have all the Santa Fe equipment up on the roof, like the, the plate with the antenna and the rotating beacon and the right kind of air horn. Uh, Burlington Northern Cascade Green, so that'd be right early 70s. That beautiful metallic blue and white electromotive demonstrator. And man, next to fantasies, those demonstrators, I'll take two of everything. Uh, the black NW, Norfolk and Western, where they did just the, the white NW interlock, that's like 71 or two when they introduced that. Uh, Pincy in Brunswick Green, I almost said Tuscan Red, which would be a passenger, which is not real. So yes, a Brunswick Green Pincy, the High Hood Southern, which is another pretty one in the tuxedo scheme. That SP, which would be overloaded with the lights on the nose, the L-shaped window. Your Union Pacific is a little bit later. That's like late 1970s with the shield on the cab and the large Union Pacific on the side and the numbering where they dropped them down. They were like single digits from, I think originally they were like 3,600 and about 1980-ish. They dropped into that and see the antenna plate up there. The horns have been moved back there by the, in between the radiator fans. It's got a Western Cullen beacon up on the roof. Man. Nice. And there's an un tell me about the undeck because I've already had a couple guys asking me with all these different things they make, what flavor do I get if I buy an undeck? And I don't know. Is that something can they email or ask somebody? Because I said, Oh, I'm not sure. I'll check. That should be defined uh on the website on the unpainted. Okay. And I'll we'll check that out. Okay. Very nice. A lot of uh, details on the road names, for sure. And <laughs> well, I, you know, I remember in, in, in O-Gage and then Atherin Blue Box, there was kind of a model in there with a few parts in it you could put on and, and, and customize it. And uh, I, I just can't believe the amount of detail we're putting out, out of the box per road name. That's very nice. And all these are Paragon 4 with the capacitor, the new sound system. I love the capacitor thing. It, Even just the fun of pulling them off the track and they keep running from it. I don't know why that's neat. <laughs> and sometimes I have to be careful because I'm doing the pull test, I'm doing the scale speed, and I got to weigh them. And I'll grab them at times as they're still slowing down, start to put them on my scale. And it's like, whoop, don't let them go flying off. <laughs> it looks like the undeck is the, uh, the same as the demonstrator there, Tony. The kind of plane, yeah, on the yeah. 45. Okay, yeah. Which would make sense. Kind of just the kind of standard version. And the capacitance, the added capacitance, it just hides a lot of problems on layouts, on switches, the way you would get that that momentary make and break that would make oh, yeah. the locomotive reset. That's just take this is gone now. When that Jeep 20 came out, that's one of the first, the two things on that Jeep 20 design I, I called Bob on was the coupler pocket. I love, because again, I'm sure not everybody's taking them apart right and left, but everything that comes to my desk, I got to take apart because I got to shoot a picture of the drive and all that. So I'm always taking this stuff apart. That new coupler pocket, the way it's kind of that single piece that snaps together, because I always have trouble sliding the two plastic pieces. And if they've got a metal thing in there, it's just... Ah, and of course, you know, I'm pushing 60. My eyes are going on me, which, you know, James said in a video, I think he was doing your E-units. He said his old man eyes. And I almost texted him saying, you're not old enough to have old man. Yeah, get out of here. But anyway, yeah, the coupler pocket and then the capacitor stuff in the drive. I, both those are, they're fantastic. I, I, I Both Thank are you. very nice. Yeah. Thank you. Makes them work. You don't have to think about it. <laughs> And speaking of, uh, I was talking about the cl the class lights on that review. They've got like a pro lighting mode, so you can individually control all these different lights. And that's kind of a new feature of Paragon 4, right, Ken? Yes, yeah. And you know, different clubs use different different lighting uh, uh, classifications or whatever. And, you know, we always heard, well, you did this, but that's good for this railroad. What about my railroad? And it's like, well... There you go. <laughs> Enjoy. Nice. Yeah. That's great. All right. So let's see what we have next. Oh. 
In the meantime, Ken Jr. is actually the young one of the group. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I'm getting older. <laughs> He's not. I can't remember. We were talking something one time, and I asked him about the bicentennial. And he said I wasn't around. I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> this I, I don't see I didn't put on my list but it's another new model and oh. it's an N scale RSD 15s low and high hoods wow. again uh, uh, real world specific detail and I don't have road names on this. Because I have the A and the C because that's, again, these are pre-production pieces. This is a first for N, isn't it? Which, in a way, when I saw that, I remember asking one of my guys, I said, really? Because I think that was the first model I ever got, Broadway Limited. My dad bought me one of the Santa Fe Gators. And it's like, they've never done that in N scale yet? Wow. Oh, and um, at shows, this is just so highly requested. So, um, James, do you have the HO version? I'm oh, sorry? Do you have the HO version of the RC? Oh, we've made them many, many times in the past. Yes, but uh, James, do you have the HO oh. version? Oh, um, I think I reviewed one a while back. Um, no. Maybe not. I can't remember. They were great <laughs> sellers for the HO. Yeah, it's, it's been a while that they've produced them. It's been two or three years, right, Ken? Uh, oh, the HO, yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Tony, yeah. do you have the road names for the uh, the N scale? Uh, sure do. The Lonos, which got nicknamed the Gators for obvious reason. Santa Fe and the bookends are the as delivered blue, yellow with the billboard lettering. And then the zebra paint, which is the black with stripes on the side, also Santa Fe. Well, that would be as delivered. So sorry, as delivered Santa Fe's in the zebra paint, black with stripes, and then early 60s repaint into the the bookends uh besmer and lake erie's high hood duluth masabi and iron ridge another ore hauler high hood uh lake superior and ishpeming did i say that right ken ishpeming i never know i don't know how to say that one ls and i lono's another ore hauler and that's a second hand owner uh high hood pen central which would be a repainted pensy you're also doing pensy which would be as delivered and Southern Pacific, of course, in looks like four road names. Yeah. Can't get those SP guys are crazy. <laughs> SP guys just those are the Milwaukee guys. They buy everything. And then you're doing uh, C and O in that nice blue with the bell up front. And then you've got a Canadian Pacific in that original maroon and gray. And I gotta look at that. Did they have that, or is that based on? I think all the others are prototypes. That one might be a fantasy, but I gotta look. We typically say fantasy when it's there. I was going to say, usually you mark it. So I think that's real. That one stumped me. I got to go look at that now. That's a beautiful scheme, that maroon and gray with the yellow bands on the nose. That's really nice. And cotton belt. Cotton belt. Oh, the, that's uh, why I said four SPs. SP. Thank you, yeah. Ken Jr. Yes, yes, Thank yes. you. Yeah, okay. subsidiary cotton belt. Yeah. yeah. But, beautiful paint schemes and a, a, a great time to be on scaler. Yeah, those were, uh, those were produced in the 50s, right, Tony? Yes, that's a late 50s Alco about 55 to towards like 1960. But one, one thing I'm learning about Broadway Limited, other than the fact that uh, inscalers are going to need a second job, <laughs> is, is that they don't they don't just pile on everything present day. They're really meeting modeler needs from all sorts of eras. We've talked about the, gosh, about every decade since the 20s, just in this short time here um, on the live stream. So it's good because, you know, some of the complaints I see from modelers is stop with the present day stuff. I want to see something else, you know, because we've got this large contingent of modelers that's not present day, you know, and, and even though I'm present day, I understand where they're coming from. So, yeah, I don't think, you know, I don't think anybody's catalog has the range when I stop and think about it. Because going back to like that Pensy Electric would be the 1920s, but mm -hmm. you do have modern stuff as well all the way up to you know the jivos whatever even an in scale and then yeah. all the theme yeah i'm trying to think who would comparatively be able to throw out a catalog that says we got stuff back to when the wheels first turning but yeah <laughs> almost and every everything in between in between yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right cool and james how do you like the uh the paragon four 
Oh, uh, well, I like the fact that there's a capacitor. Uh, as Ken mentioned, my track work is not great. Uh, Tony's always telling me, hey, James, you need to really go back to modeling school. Well, <laughs> I have never said that. <laughs> Plus, the Bob does all that work for you anyway, doesn't he, Bob Olson? So look at Bob is the bench work, and then I, I took over from there, but oh, I should okay. have had him do the whole thing. Um, I, I got to get you a subscription to Model Railroad News. Snap together track, so I, yeah. I won't even get in the discussion. But yeah, Paragon 4, you know, they've just improved on on their Paragon 3 by adding the capacitor, uh, reliability, the pro lighting mode. Uh, there's something with programming. I couldn't find my notes where it's uh, like an auto detects programming track or something, Ken. I forget. Oh, I um, we have what we've, we've called it autopilot in the past. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that's where the, the locomotive will, will um, memorize the route you put it on, where you slow it down, where you uh, blow the whistle and bring it back into the station. And it'll memorize that and, and just keep wow. doing that. And yeah. to one guy that at, at, in a club, and they used that as their primary train. <laughs> so they all had to work around it because it was doing what it was going to do. Doing its thing. Wow. Yeah. yeah, and there's no other product that does that. I think it, in the in the manual it's called like play and record macro it's like function 26 and 27 are up there in that range but there's there's no other uh, products that do that and uh years and years ago before i got into product reviews on trains what gave me the idea is i did product reviews on cars and there were certain manufacturers you would look at in the auto industry that would be cutting edge on their technology and you would see that's what most of the stuff's going to become and Broadway Limited is that for the model train industry. People are looking at all the new pro all the new features, uh, some of the unique features, the technology, and saying, "Well, this is where the hobby's going." You know. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. We love what we do. We enjoy it. Very true. Very true. All right. Next up, and it's not going to look like a blue traffic can. <laughs> it's, it really is a blue goose, even though it looks more golden. Wow. Um, wow. And, and this is, again, another hybrid. Um, Beautiful. And, wow. I don't know. Can you get that? Look at that. Isn't that Gorgeous. wonderful? Wow. Very cool. And you can see, well, even some of the plastic pieces here may not be plastic when it's done. It could be. Uh, uh, Brad, I don't know. Like the cylinders, I know won't be plastic, but wow. um, the hybrids are just to me that that's modeling art. That's oh, awesome. it is. Yeah, brass. It's always been compared to art. And the thing I like on yours is there's no it. It while it's the brass boiler, brass tender, you've got a good modern mechanism you'd expect. You don't have any of the finicky stuff of an old classic piece of brass. Oh, oh it looks beautiful. Does it run? Not really. Yeah. But, you know, these are so nice. Yeah. The most important pieces we do is the chassis. We die cast the chassis, and that brings a lot of the precision to the axles, to the motor mounts. Um, it, it's, it, it, it makes it run precisely. Uh, so, you know, when, when we first started the hybrid thing, we're like, we didn't know what it was. We didn't know what to call it. Uh, it's not brass. It's not die cast. It's not plastic. It's kind of uh, a hybrid. <laughs> and it, it really took us a while to, to, to define it. And um, it, it certainly has uh, caught on. And people, I don't know if they realize exactly what brass models cost. Yes. I've had a, a recently well-versed uh, couple of experiences just looking into some brass models that are currently being produced. And something like that could be uh, if it was produced by one of the major brass uh, manufacturers. And there's even locomotives. It's a large locomotive, a coal turbine that's going to run with an MSRP of almost $6,000. So people are getting a huge bargain with your brass hybrid series 
Uh, and hopefully they, you know, appreciate that and understand that most of the components are brass anyway, and it operates, like you said. Yeah, yeah and, and it has sound, and it has TCC, um, and smoke, puffing smoke, and um, they run. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and that blue goose is a one of a kind, but you've got a ton of them. I'm sorry. I say the blue goose is a one of a kind. There were ten of those built those four six fours for the Santa Fe, but they only streamlined that one, 3460. Yet in your announcements, you've got a whole list of them. So my first thought was, are they fantasy numbers? Or, no, they are all 3460. But tell us about what you've got, the scissor exhaust stack, which they added later. Like that's the model you're holding up there you had versus the low. And then so that one probably also is missing some of its skirting below the boiler. Correct. Yeah, see so around the drivers there, though you'll have as delivered models that'll have the lower exhaust stack without the like hinge thing, and then it has more skirting across, kind of hiding the drivers, you know. Yeah. And then, as they always did, those things always look so great. And I assume the first the maintenance guys probably said, Who designed this? Yeah. Are they out to get me, and they you know threw that away, went to a dump. Yeah, get that out of here. So, yeah, so they got those stripped off, and then they put that uh, exhaust thing, of course, to try to keep, all, you know, the exhaust stuff away from the cab. But all the different, I'm looking at this now, and there's one, two, there's six, six different. Oh, and I see, I didn't see this yet. Bob had said something about doing these. You've got two fantasy Santa Fe's on your website now as well. Ken, have you got these on the website yet for Train World? There's I two, don't, they're there's not two ours. Ones. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, these are, these are regular Broadway. Aren't, oh, no, they're not. I'm yeah. sorry. Excuse me. Yes, I do that's see that. Well, not sorry. this time. What date, the the, uh, <laughs> what date is the, the, um, the Blue Goose is um, scheduled uh, for? It says August, September, which, August, wow, September. that's right around the corner. Yes, it is. And, boy, that it is a beauty. Yeah, and it did we, we didn't get to see it. Can I share my screen and show... Let's yep. look at, uh, let me hit my button, because seeing it in brass is beautiful, I will admit. But then you, I think you also got to see what it really there. It'll be in this beautiful two-tone blue. Let me try to make that. Uh, here there we go. This is in May's Model Railroad News that I just sent to press this week. So readers, you guys will have this in about 10 days. But there's the real 3460 in Atchison, can or argentine kansas in the deadline uh after it had you know ran for so many years and you can see the skirting is missing there and then here are the early versions see how the swope down below the cab and this extra piece here versus over here there's not as much skirting and you've got differences in the two-tone blue as well as you've got a road number on the tender here i guess this is maybe I think that was delivered with the number and it came off or changed. I forget which way that goes. But basically, if you want a blue goose in HO like this, you have basically every way it ever looked from the time it rolled in in about 19, late 30s. It's a late steam era into the 50s. I mean, just amazing. Although, Ken, the one I want, when this first came out, I love this tooling that when you do these early shots, and, you know, they shoot it in this odd plastic. I said to one of my guys, I shared the picture when we first got the pictures. And I said, I want the brass one with the glow in the dark wheels. <laughs> <laughs> the new, very, new road name. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, the, you know, there's certain, and we have customers that, that stick to a, an era and uh, stick to a railroad or whatever. But for me, I see a model like that, and it's just so beautiful. It's like, yeah, it's it's it doesn't fit maybe what exactly what I'm doing here, but it's got to have it. <laughs> you know, it's just beautiful, just beautiful. Very nice. All right, my last sample is perhaps my favorite locomotive, and and it's the PRR. E6, Atlantic, oh, wow. um, Lindbergh special. That's a great backstory to it. 
Um, see the, the, the curtains in the back, the real coal load, die cast, smoke, all the Broadway stuff. Um, yeah, Ken, out of all your announcements, this engine seems like it's it's the hottest engine. Um, um, I guess it's 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 small, it's compact. Everybody could put it on the layout, and everybody loves Pennsylvania. It, it yeah, it works on on every layout at scale, so it, it's proportion, um, and uh, it's just a cool locomotive, the four four two. Um, and then I got this other one. I don't know anything about this. Maybe Kenny, you can help me and define what this might be here. <laughs> <laughs> you recognize that, Kenny? <laughs> yes, yes. A little small exclusive. Very nice. Wow. <laughs> I like that tender. Beautiful. Wow. There you go. So that that is the what uh, Ken, this is what the E6 E6 Atlantic? E6. Yes. And you guys are going to have fantasy scheme, fantasy scheme. Now, why didn't you tell me about this? I haven't heard about any of this. Have you Tony, this you thing? always tell me about things. So I, right. I, I figure Ken Silvestri has to tell you about some there stuff. There we go. I'm surprised <laughs> and yeah, I'm going to have to order one of those. That's too cool. That's, That's going to be right. a train world exclusive. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But very nice. You guys are killing I, me here. The I dog, haven't even the dog seen that have to Go to dry food. I can't afford anything else. <laughs> so, yeah. Like that sample doesn't have the sound yet into it and the the, the proper electronics, and, and that's part that's part of where we get the samples for. And then the uh, uh, the sound guys and all that get involved and they do what they do. Very nice. All right. Uh, wow. you, you just keep on rolling out samples for us. That, well, that's, that, that is the end. <laughs> I have nothing left to say. <laughs> you would be a good uh, bartender or, or waiter just serving out the apps. <laughs> uh, no, we have a lot of cool stuff and uh, stuff for everyone, I think. That's great. And Tony, when is that Blue Goose article? Did that already hit in Model Railroad News? Uh, it is in May. It's it's on the top okay. cover of the May issue. Wow. And it's the wow. first news item in May. Uh, and like I say, it went to the printer Tuesday, so it usually starts landing in people's hands. It'll be like late next week. Ken, you made but... the top. You made the top. <laughs> it's a great one. Thank you very much. <laughs> And we're right. putting the HOFEF Northern Greyhound is behind me in that black box is June's cover. And then that Santa Fe, I never know which way to point on this stuff. That Santa Fe EA back there, I'm doing testing on it. And it's going to young Drew Warrington to oh, nice. review. The, I, he called me the other night and was saying, hey, I want to review. So I said, boy, have you ever seen one of those EAs? He goes, no, but I think it's probably the neatest e unit ever made. I said, well, I have got a pair for you, buddy. I'm doing a GMO, and why don't you do the Santa Fe, and we'll do a review together. So Drew's oh, going to be. I doing appreciate that. that so much, Tony. He's a great kid, and you know he loves steam. He buys buys so much stuff, and is you know he volunteers at that one. I can't think of the name of it now. Uh, real, you know, excursion railroad, and he's in college. He's doing good in school. That's the first thing I asked when he asked about reviewing something. I said, "How are your grades?" <laughs> We're not at the end of the semester yet. He said, I'm doing great. You know, this, I'm like, okay, then, yep, let me get something packed up for you. So, yeah. Very cool. And a, a lot of people are, and Drew is a great kid, and he did an excellent video on the FEF, and he always works with Tony with some great reviews. And then uh, a lot of people are asking about the GP30s, Ken. I know you didn't have any samples tonight. But um, any upcoming uh, samples later down the pipeline or maybe pictures? Yeah, it's in tooling now. Okay. Uh, wow. So shortly. Okay. Very nice. Can, Very we nice. Can, if we've got a minute, I yeah. can show some of the CAD stuff if you want the shared screen. That would be great. Also, uh, while he's doing that, because I'm an excellent multitasker, uh, the review of the P5A and N scale just went live on my channel. Oh, oh you're multitasking. Cool. Oh, very good. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And this is the follow-up. Ken showed us the SD45s for September. Then the later in the fall, fourth quarter, 
Paragon 4 GP35 and GP30s will follow. And these are just a sampling of, if you look here, nothing you see is the same. I've got a prototype picture of the SP, and then below it is the CAD drawing for the Southern Pacific. And you can see it's got the nose lights and such. Below it is a non-dynamic Jeep 35 with the bell mounted on the side. Uh, that's a New York Central. And these are different phases as well. Uh, they're phase one sub phases of GP 35s being done by Broadway. No late phase or phase two, which was very limited. That's like 64 and 65. But during 63, four, the majority of Jeep 35s were done and they're all different. They're called like phase 1A, 1AB. And the differences are like the number of door latches across the long hood, the louvers on the battery boxes above the truck by the cab. There's little thing, and that will be all addressed. And you can see it in these, the CAD drawings. What's also interesting, if you look at those illustrations, and I asked saying, is this correct? And got told, yes, it is. That BNSF is a rebuilt Jeep. That's their the Jeep 39M is what BNSF or BN actually called those. They're rebuilt like 3035s. And see, they knocked out the fan in the center in the back. It's got a light in the nose. It's got the extra equipment on the roof. So they are tooling that up. Then that CP rail, the GP30, there were two Jeep30s done for Canadian Pacific. And then there's some Jeep35s, but they're odd ducks. And those are being done. Like the 30s have straight up uh, these pilot steps, how they're kind of tiered or like a staircase on the 35s. The Canadian ones are straight up like a ladder. That's being done. The different lights, the bell between the number boards is being done. You're doing a high hood as well. I mean, this is, uh, you say there's two locomotives here, a Jeep 30 and a Jeep 35. But once you start digging through all the rebuilds, the road names, I think there's probably at least about six or eight locomotives actually here, Ken. And these all come out by years in. This, this is going to be an amazing group of stuff. Yeah. And I, I don't think uh, many people have a GP35. The, the, you know, there was t EMD, the 30 is a classic. With, okay. and I've got it. I have it pictured here at the bottom. Next month, I'm going to have more on it. This follows the Blue Goose announcement. I have, I have four pages in a row for Broadway wow. at the head end wow. of May's Model Road News because it was just awesome stuff. Uh, yeah, the, the, the high end 35 will be a wonderful model. We've really not mm -hmm. had a lot of those. And then right. the 30 will follow as well. So, and this whole, the nice thing too, from the 20 to the 45 to these two, all the Paragon 4, you got a nice compatibility with the capacitor, the sound. It's kind of, it's a nice, uh, a kind of an operating blessing there of having the same kind of electronics and stuff in them and the variety you guys are knocking out. And I know you got more things you're working on too, but I know you don't want to spill those yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's, a, that's another show. <laughs> yeah. Very neat. And uh, James mentioned, uh, James, if you don't mind me sharing uh, uh, a snip clip of your uh, video, but um, sure, no problem. It seems like you, you just dropped it on uh, uh, everybody on your channel. And uh, here's a little bit of the sneak peek. Limited has changed their packaging to white which is kind of cool it definitely pops we'll take this a look at the uh the p5 i don't know box cap or not in scale couplers with magnetic glad hand on pulling down the lock or pulling them up from just get uh quick views look at that really nice it is such a neat i mean look at all the stuff on that and the 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 three big wheels in the center I think that's such a it's such a neat prototype, isn't it? Yeah. Ken? I mean, what, as you say, it's it is such a neat box on wheels. <laughs> uh, even the detail in the wheels is is there. Yeah. It's, it's it is a cool it's a cool model. And I do like that, uh, James. You mentioned that the packaging. I don't know why, but I do. I love this new. I like the packaging, and the one thing I like this new design, the way this comes out. And that the owner's manual comes out of the top here, I think all, and it all slides into that sleeve. Oh, wow. And the one thing I find, in, 
I and it seems odd. Now this is a collector speaking. This would make me buy models, but other people like who cares? Like these Santa Fe EA say March fifteenth, twenty twenty one. Do you know how much money I would spend to know when all my old Tyco and AHM models, the exact date they were made? <laughs> oh, that'd be awesome. So that's so cool. <laughs> but yeah, this, I love this. And these, of course, are come as an AB. The B's non-powered, and they come in a sleeve. But boy, this this packaging stuff, I think, is sharp. Very nice. Well, thank, Very you. Nice. thank you. And the white, the white, as James says, just the logos and everything pop. It has a really neat look. Thank Very you. Neat. And uh, you could check James's uh, channel for for that uh, full video. Uh, really neat, and he does a great job, and a lot tons of detail on that box cab. So really nice, Ken. Work, Ken. Thanks for the plug. <laughs> and no, well, I'm going to thank James. Ken Jr. is not wearing any green today. Is it uh, the Italian thing? Will he not do it? I mean. <laughs> <laughs> it, What's the deal? When, when when we booked the show, Ken and I both had no idea it was St. Patty's, and I still didn't know today. <laughs> I wrote that I I got a, I have the old paper calendar, you know, I, that still sits at my desk below my keyboard is one of those little, you know, and so as I started to scratch it down, I'm like, oh, that's St. Patrick's Day. It's like, boy, I hope everybody's sober for that show. Thank you. If I don't drink, I may have to run that show. <laughs> I, I think Ken was trying to get out of the show tonight by saying his audio didn't work so he could get to the bar. <laughs> I hate that's a panic. Oh, my. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. That's, right. that's right. All right, guys. Well, Ken, anything else before we tune out and let people get to St. Patty's Day? Uh, no, that's all for today. But, you know, next show, there'll be more. There'll be more. And Kenny, thank you so much for, for hosting. Um, and Tony and James, thank you for all, all your reviews and, and everything you do for us. Uh, appreciate it. It's fun stuff. Great hobby. Uh, Likewise, thank thanks for all the great products keeping us busy. Uh, <laughs> our pleasure. Very neat. And we want to thank Ken Silvestri very much from Broadway Limited Trains for coming on tonight, uh, showing off his... Uh, I guess pre-production samples and also a brand new announcement and scale Y6B. Tony is going to be cooking with reviews and uh, typing up like a, a maniac over there. He's got a lot of work to do. And so does James, uh, JLWII2000. Uh, a lot of work on the videos to, to get those pumping out. So uh, between the three of us, or four of us, we'll have a lot of coverage on all the Broadway products. And uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us tonight. Have a safe and healthy St. Patty's Day. Uh, if you need a ride, please call Ken. <laughs> yeah. Where's your dad? Yeah. All right, guys. Well, have a great night. Be safe. Take care. Good night.